cards downstairs in our in our archives, but we have it digitized so that you can just search it on uh, on the computer. And I have a great time just going through those. They sort of, um, you know, whatever the, whatever the topic is, they the, it's they'll give have an entry and then they follow it with a date and the date represents the day that it was in the newspaper. So if there's an obituary, it says so and so dies. Um, they didn't die on that date. That's the date their obituary occurred, but um, it has lots of good <coughs> clues in it. Um, some, some subject headings. I've, I've done a study of subject headings, trying to find some that were specially, of special interest to genealogists. I'm still not done, because I, I have too many projects to do all of them. Uh, some subject headings that you might expect to find. The Grand Army of the Republic which says see also Sedgwick Post, because that's right next door to us, the um, Sedgwick Post of the uh, GAR operated right next to us. Uh, the Antique Woolen Company, lots of companies are listed in there. Sometimes it'll go on for many, many cards, telling you what all was going on. Um, World War, that's all it says is World War, because when they were keeping it, there had only been one. Um, Murders. See also executions. Um, they they have um, pay, you know cards and cards and cards of murders and a fair number of cards of uh, executions. They also have lots of social organizations and service organizations like, for example, the Friends of Irish Freedom. And uh, let's see some that have especially large numbers of cards. Murders, there are 45 cards. Centenarians, there are 113 cards. And that's not one person on each one. They would usually, one person might get a couple of lines. Um, uh, there, uh, there are nine cards about automobile fatalities, because that was sort of a new thing in part of that time. There. Uh, the Golden Weddings, there are 376 cards. Mm -hmm. So if you have anybody who lived long enough to celebrate their golden wedding, it might have been mentioned in the paper, and you might be able to find it through those cards. Suicides, and, and there are 184 cards. And one thing that I noticed about suicide is, if it was mentioned that they were afraid this person had committed suicide, it was on the suicide thing, and you know the follow-up might show that that wasn't at all what happened, but um, it is the sort of thing that people sometimes come in looking for. There's a story in the family that somebody committed suicide, and they're trying to figure out who it was, or when it was, or why it was. Um, casualties. Even though the index itself stopped around 1930, the, um, they kept up with some of the cards past that. One thing that they did was war casualties. They hadn't used that phrase in World War I or the Civil War. I'm assuming maybe at that time it wasn't used, but by World War II, uh, they, they talked about casualties. And there are 102 cards relating to World War II uh, casualties, 29 cards of Korean War casualties, 23 of Vietnam War ca um, casualties. Inventions, there are 13 cards about all about inventions that came up. There are more than 70 about patents that were filed. Um, and then there's, there are uh, two or three cards that are specifically about um, uh, uh, in, uh, local inventors who got, got patents on things. Oops, go back. There are some other weird things, mysteries, which uh, could be somebody's missing, could be somebody thinks they saw a ghost, could be somebody found a body in the river and they have no idea who it is. Folk tales, uh, legends, which is basically various kinds of folk tales. Champions, which seems to apply to um, people who, who are in sports or other kinds of competitions. Um, Bigamy, see marriage plights. I just love that. You know, when you when your marriage was in the newspaper, if you got a divorce, it was in the paper. It you know, and sometimes the gory details would be in there. Um, 
it, it, it's, it's amazing the stuff that, that, that they just published and nobody was suing them, so it was okay. Sometimes the, the Norwich Bulletin seems more like the National Enquirer, and some of the New York papers have even more uh, exciting things. Fecundity, which essentially I figured out is they're just reporting on families that have lots and lots of kids. Um, let's see. Oh, characters. Characters tended to be hermits and recluses and people who are just eccentric. Um, they have seven cards worth of characters. Um, and then uh, reminiscences, that could be reminiscences of anything. Somebody who's thinking now about something that happened 50 years ago or 30 years ago. Um, and then, uh, let's see, the, the tramps were just what you'd think, just people who were wandering around. Sometimes they were known to belong to various families and they weren't living with their families for some reason. Okay, now, photograph collections. This is really exciting because we are, oh, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Where did that go? I seem to have lost a slide. Okay. Well, I, let me mention, the slide will probably come up, it probably just got to a weird place. But um, last year, the State Library had some money uh, to digitize some Connecticut newspapers. And they decided that they were going to digitize our newspaper and another newspaper from, I don't know, the western part of the state. Um, for the years 1909 through 1922. So you can find the Norwich Bulletin searchable in digital form on Chronicling America, which is, um, uh, you can get to from the Library of Congress. If you just Google Chronicling America, uh, it, can, it can get there. Um, it isn't our resource per se, but we're really excited to have that so that we can make it available to people. Now, our photograph collection, we have been recently, we've been lucky enough that they're letting us devote some time to our photograph collection. Um, last week, we added a link on our homepage to a Flickr account that we started um, that you can, um, I thought I had a slip for that too, but perhaps not. Oh, I don't know what I've done here. Let's see. Wait a minute. Okay. All right. Yeah, this is, uh, if you go to our homepage, OtisLibraryNorwich.org, uh, and up in the upper right-hand corner, there's a page with a postcard that says Flickr. And you click on that, and then you get to this page where you can get to our Flickr page. And it first opens up in a media stream, which is really just, you know, S series of images, it probably in the order in which we, we added them. Um, but uh, there's also a tab that has albums where they're sort of organized. Right now we've got 650 things that are, uh, that are up there, but uh, we are going to be adding more. And we're also working on a Facebook page. It hasn't been made public yet. But what we really want, we have a lot of paper, a lot of photographs that we know something about, but we have a lot that we really don't. And we are hoping that by having these uh, social media sites, Flickr and Facebook, that it will encourage people to go look at those photographs and make comments if they know something. You know, if you recognize your great grandmother, we want to know. You know, we, we, um, we've had some luck. We, earlier in the last year, we did, um, uh, we put up some pictures of uh, uh, soldiers from World War II directly on our homepage. And we did hear from at least one person who was able to identify somebody for us who, who we did not um, have information on. So the biggest excitement in our photograph collection is the Dukas collection. Um, why is this? Oh, gosh. I'm having a terrible time. I don't, I'm not very good at this. I've got from, the wrong view. Do the from, from current slide back 
slideshow. Okay. 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 Oh, good. Sorry about that. <laughs> so we were we were um, lucky that that uh, before he passed away, uh, Rene Dugas decided to give his collection to Otis Library, and um, the Dugases, Prem, Prem Dugas, who who uh, died in 1936, he had a studio in Taftville uh, from about 1889, and he took beautiful portraits of people um, for quite a long time, doing all kinds of things, portraits of people in classes and things like that, and then when he became ill sometime in the 30s, his youngest son, Rene, who's called Rennie here, uh, was it w took it up and he worked as a photographer. He operated the studio and now I think, I don't know if his son is still operating it, but a few years ago he was. So they have over a hundred years of covering what was going on in Taffville and, and, and somewhat in Norwich, but a lot of it is the, the people of Taffville, the, the, the clubs that they belonged to, the schools that they went to, the churches, they have pictures of nuns and priests, their, their wedding pictures and pictures of soldiers who are getting ready to go off to, to World War I or World War II. It's really, really a treasure. And we are working really hard to get as much of it up as possible. Now, before he passed away uh, in 2009, uh, and, uh, and, right, and before he gave us his collection, Mr. Dugas put a lot of effort into identifying everybody that he could. He went through, you know, books from the studio that people had, had signed in and uh, information that was left by him or by his father. And, um, you know, he put as much as he could. But there are many, many photographs that are not identified at all. And then some of them would, would say, like, LeBlanc girl, question mark. You know, so it's like she looks like she fits in that family, but we're not exactly sure, um, or we're not sure which one it is. So we really are hoping to get lots of um, lots of folks who have ancestors from Taffville to look through that collection and 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 tell us if they recognize any of those pictures. And here is um, that's a photograph of his. Uh, his 100th birthday party that was not long before he passed away. He was just, you know, uh, Bill Stanley used to call him Norwich's Renaissance man, and he really, really was. He, he was a photographer and an historian. He used to do these great walks around Taftville, talking about Taftville and the Panema Mill. Uh, he was an artist. He did a little painting. He was a musician. And, and he, he published several books that we have in our, in our collection. Um, and then here's an example of some of the things. This is a photograph from uh, the Taftville Pioneers Club that used to have annual outings. And uh, this one happens to be from August of 1913. And sometimes he would have identification for some people or sometimes he would have all people, but not, you know, lot, there are lots of people that we still need to identify. Uh, and then the other photograph is, um, oh gosh, who's, well, I don't know. I can't remember the name of the barber shop, but it was a barber shop that was, that was, um, <coughs> that was there. So that tells you a little bit about the stuff that we have. We hope that you will come and visit us, or if you have somebody that you are helping um, that you think might benefit from our collection, you know, send them over. We're always happy to help. Okay, so that's... Now, um, Andrea uh, Buka, who is from the Ledger Historical Society, is going to is going to share a little bit about if, if I may, I'd like to poke around on our website just a tiny bit. Okay, yeah, you could, you could do whatever. Thank you. Um, let me just, I'm just trying to get this thing. Oh, I've got to close it yeah. first. 
showing my age. No, you're not. <laughs> okay. I, um, as, as Kathy said, I'm Andrea from the Ledger Historical Society. Um, my other hat is as head of tech services at the Ledger Public Library. So um, you, just, just to let you know, um, you can always pop your head in at the Bill Library during the week. And even if I'm not wearing my archivist hat, you can probably ask me a quick question or make an appointment or just contact me in that way if you like to. Um, but um, basically, Ledger was um, Ledger broke off from Groton, as many of you probably already know, in 1836. So we do have a fair number of number of very local documents and lots of family things from before that period. But if you're looking for vital records, um, very often you will have to go to to Groton to get anything before 1836. Um, we do have some things like probate records. We have, we have copies of the ledger probate records after that period. We don't have an index for them yet, though. I'm still working on getting one of those from Groton. Um, we have some other things, too, that I'll go into. But um, basically, our, our archive is, is in the little, the little turret room in the oldest part of the Bill Library. Um, it, excuse me. It's called the Janice Whiteman. Whiteman Bell Historical Research Room, and it was named after um, our founder of the, of the room, Janice, who has since retired. She was, I think, 94 when she handed the room over to me just a few years ago. So um, she still pops in every once in a while to say hi. But, um, but um, right, we are all volunteers, like um, many of the other groups who are here today. We're, we're run on volunteer power. So um, we are happy to make appointments with you um, to, for, for when you come in to see us. Um, other than that, I try to have at least one to two days per week where we're just open. Um, right now, it's on Tuesday mornings, and that will run all the way from now all the way through the um, probably until around the early December. Um, and then after that, you can always email me or just say, hey, when are you, when, when are you around? And we're happy to do that. I'm also a full-time student again. I'm crazy enough to do that at this age. but. Um, so that's why the that's why that part changes a little bit. But um, I'm happy to try to accommodate anyone who needs help. Um, we also have uh, Louisa Watrous, who um, works at the Mystic Seaport, but also volunteers some of her time with us. She's there on occasional Saturdays, so it's best to check in first and make sure that she's there too. And she's working on digitizing some things for us. So we have a very long-term digitization project going on. Um, and I will show you the fruits of that of that labor so far. So we do we do have a, a website. Let's see, it's coming up there. It is. And I have I have brochures and everything back on the table back there. And I oh we're oh, not okay. connected to <laughs> Let me see if I can fix that real quick. Um, Um, I brought I brought my computer with me, and I if if you guys are interested in just random objects from um, our archive, they um, there we go. Um, I do I do have a little presentation that I made for just a general audience if you want to poke through it. But we've got some of our more historic general documents, um, things like that back there that I'm running online that you're welcome to look at too, or pick up a brochure with our website on it, um, that sort of thing. Okay, not right now. We're not going to update. <laughs> well, I can't spell either. Ledgerhistory.org is our domain. And if you email us at research at ledgerhistory.org, you will get me, um, our primary researcher, um, Rusty Godino, and also Louisa as well. Um, one of us will, will chime right it? in. What is it? Info at? No, research at. Oh, research at? Ledgerhistory.org. Ledgerhistory. Okay. Yeah. So, and you can always just go to our page and right up here under research. You know what? I think we're just under research at Q's. To tell you the truth, I don't go on this part very often. <laughs> um, there's a little bit about the room. Yeah, there we are, right there. So you can always click on that 
and um, email us. The other thing too is, is, is if you have a question, whether you're another society or, or if you are just um, someone doing, doing research, you can always click here and fill out our, our inquiry form, which, yes. And you can either email this back to me or you can print it out, mail it to me, you can drop it off the Bill Library, however you want to get it to me is fine. And um, this, this is helpful to us so, so we can get ready for your visit or if, you, or if you're unable to visit us, then, then, then you can fill this out and we will do our very best to, um, you just put all your information down here. And um, we'll do our very best to, to try to answer your question um, or confirm something or look something up for you. Um, okay. So that's, yeah. whoops, I touched something. Oh, please, no, not right now. <laughs> it may go out on me, I'm sorry. Um, there's another tab. I am so sorry. Let's see if we can get this to work. There is another tab that, as Kathy said about the Otis collection, um, oh, there we go, good. Right back here up in our, under our research tab, um, we also have um, cataloged our books. This is the majority of the books that we have in our research room. And as she said, all of hers start with a G, all of our call members start with his room. So um, we've, we've set up the search parameters here for you, so you can just poke around and it's, it's in Dewey Decimal Order, which may not mean anything to most of you probably, unless you dig around in Dewey a lot. Um, but it's a good way to browse. The other way is um, we, we have the same catalog as Otis does. In fact, we're, we're, we're in the same consortia. So, so our two libraries run things the same way. So right here, you can also change this to keyword and then, and then put in your family name or whatever you're looking for and hit go. and. Keep it at Ledger Libraries, and, and you'll see what every, everything we have on that subject, at least as far as the books go. We do not yet have our documents in there or our photographs. I am working on that, um, but it is but it's going to be a while before that happens. We do have document, some, some of our document boxes, which, which contain um, collections of documents from, say, the Gear family or the Avery family. Um, those, are, those are in here. Um, so, so you may hit um, pay dirt as far as looking for wills or deeds or things like that. Um, so, so this is a really good resource um, to, to search in. Let me go back here. Okay. And our useful links, I think. There you go. We do have some things here for the town of Ledger which will, if you're, if you're researching land records and things like that, um, that will take you to, um, to the town clerk's office and you can call them or, um, e um, I'm not sure if she does email or not, but um, Patricia's wonderful. And um, so, so that's, we've got several, several different ones on there. It looks like we need to add Otis. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so you can, so you can jump off to other, other places and from there. Um, you can also find out what's what's going on. We do have a Fourth of July event coming up that I hope some of you might might pop in for. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, here's here's our digital collections, and we are um, we have I think we have almost a thousand or somewhere between eight hundred and a thousand photographs scanned so far, um, and we put them into categories. So. Um, some of them are general, they're just people, um, churches, farms, and houses, so basically buildings, except for the schools have their own, um, our up and down sawmill. Um, and then we've done some for the special projects. So we do have, those of you who have any Ra um, Rogerine or um, so-called Quaker family, we do have um, a lot about them. In fact, we do, we do have a book that was written about the Rogerines in, in Ledger. Um, the Satterley family, um, in addition to these photographs, we have lots of other documents, and we actually have three generations of diaries from the family, so those are really cool to look at um, for various reasons, whether you're looking for historical things or people passing away or just what was, what was Gail's Ferry like at that time. Um, we do have, this is not inclusive, but we do have um, information on the Allens, the Averys, the Gears, the Lambs, Lesters, Stoddards, Satterleys, Holdridges, Holmbergs, Williams, Watrises, Whipples, 
and many other families, but those are the major ones, um, and I probably forgot some. Um, we have photos, diaries, letters, land records, including, um, we do have some uh, surveys and deeds. Um, we have wills and will inventories. We have the probate records that I mentioned earlier. We do, we also have scrapbooks. Um, some of them go back